Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video, another plug side chat. So Bjorn Nyland recently reviewed the Kona EV and he did a very thorough uh, review of it including uh, testing out its charging capacity on a 175 kilowatt charger and uh, you know he went into a lot of detail. I'm going to put a link to his videos below. But I, I kind of wanted to talk about my impressions of the Kona based on what I saw of his review, how it compares to the Bolt EV, and really sort of what we can expect from it. So I went into the review expecting the, the Kona to be sort of a step ahead of the Bolt EV and requiring GM to have to do a lot of catching up. And... After seeing the videos, though, I don't necessarily hold that uh, same opinion. I actually think they're more equivalent than I initially anticipated. And it's going to be a good thing for the segment because the Kona EV is really going to be the Bolt EV's first actual all-electric competitor. And each has their strengths, each has their weaknesses. Uh, Hyundai, it seems like they've been listening to the EV community a lot, and that's good because a lot of the recommendations that I've been making for the Bolt EV, they've actually implemented in the Kona. Uh, a lot of people who felt that there needs to be you know, two battery options, uh, a larger battery and a smaller battery, they're doing that. So the, the Kona also has a 40 kilowatt hour uh, battery option in addition to the 64 kilowatt hour battery uh, option. So that should give people a little bit more choice. Uh, what we see right now, because the Kona EV is already on sale and it actually shares a market with the Bolt EV right now in South Korea, uh, the pricing, if it translates to other regions, it does look like the Kona, because it has a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, will start at a lower baseline than the Bolt EV. But if you max everything out, including the battery size, it will end up being more expensive than the most expensive Bolt EV. So uh, it sort of bookends in terms of purchase price. But that again is a good thing. It, it gives a wider variety and I think it addresses the needs of more uh, drivers and ultimately that's kind of what we're looking for right now is to give people a lot more choices in terms of what electric vehicles are available to them so that they can start picking one that best suits their needs you know giving giving options between something like the Kona and the Bolt and then also we know that the Kia Niro is coming soon um, and the 60 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf. All of them should have similar power, similar ranges, similar feature sets. Uh, and so that that sort of compact CUV hatchback um, segment, it's going to be very well covered in pretty much all markets around the world uh, and, and meeting a bunch of different drivers needs. Uh, with pure battery electric vehicles. That to me is the big win with the Kona coming out. Now, some specifics about it, right? Not to get into too much spoilers, but it does look like the Kona uh, has a very similar battery to the Bolt EV uh, in terms of charging capacity, in terms of energy density. The way Hyundai is a little bit more aggressive with their charging curve though, you see that the Kona does charge faster. Basically, if you walk along the charging curve, right, for, for the Bolt EV versus the Kona EV, uh, it's about 50 amps additional charging current pretty much across the entire charging curve. Uh, so, so what that amounts to is about a 30, 33% faster uh, charging rate on the Kona. So it will max out at about 70 kilowatts of charging on a 175 kilowatt charger. 
and and you know that's that's good for getting it a decent amount of capacity in a reasonable amount of time but we're still looking at for these vehicles right uh, spending somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour per charging session more than likely and of course the thing that hyundai does is they allow the charging rate to be higher up to a higher percentage of the battery that gives it an advantage in the charging rate but it's not as significant as i was anticipating it uh, to be Jeff, and I'll, I'll refer to his article below, uh, had done some sleuthing and found the LG pouch cells that are being used in varying uh, iterations between the Bolt EV, the Jaguar, I-Pace, and now the, the Hyundai Kona. They, they mostly have around a 1C uh, recharging rate, which means uh, it takes uh, basically one hour to recharge to full capacity uh, is, is their fastest um, charging rate, which is what appears to be capping the charging rate on these vehicles. So with a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack in the Kona EV, it's not really going to charge it faster than about that 70 kilowatt rate. And now that's decently fast for trip speeds, but it's not quite the, the speed that you would see out of like a Tesla or um, using the supercharger network or the new Porsche Taycan that's going to be coming out or Taycan, how, how you, however you want to pronounce it. Still, there seems to be some differences with the Jaguar I-Pace as well, where uh, Jaguar has stated that they're going to possibly push the charging rate up to about 125 kilowatts, which is uh, faster than 1C. So there might be some uh, options for enhancing the charging rate that aren't being used by GM or Hyundai. So some of the things that I didn't really like about the Kona and what I think where I think it's at a disadvantage to something like the Bolt EV and from what I've heard also it will be at a disadvantage to the Kia Niro EV as well it's the interior space. So because it's a cross-platform and not a pure BEV, it's not a pure electric vehicle built from the ground up, uh, the overall vehicle length of the Kona is about the same as the Bolt EV, but it has about an extra foot and a half that's devoted to internal combustion components in other versions. So what that means is you have to take that space from somewhere. And they've taken it from the cargo area and from the rear seats. So the cargo area is significantly smaller. Uh, the rear seat area is significantly smaller. So overall, you're getting less interior space in the Kona. And that's a big physical disadvantage that I see. The other is because uh, it doesn't have a dedicated underbody battery uh, area, there's, a, there's about a one inch or so area where it looks like the battery is extending out below the undercarriage of the vehicle. And to me, that's a very big concern. So it has about six inches of ground clearance, it looks like, but you never want your lowest point of ground clearance to be at the center of your wheelbase, which is what occurs with the Kona EV. So speed bumps shouldn't be an issue. Most of them are designed to not allow a vehicle to, to you know, scrape like that, but not everything is designed as it's supposed to be. Uh, some train tracks could actually be very dangerous for the Kona. Uh, if you have to drive off road at all, uh, you know, there could be some issues with washboard road, gravel, um, any, any sort of detritus material in the road. You could, you could run into an issue where the battery gets hit, uh, debris gets caught in it, and that's really the last thing that you want to have happen because that's a very expensive component. Uh, to try to replace and the, the vehicle is essentially dead without the battery. That is something of a concern. Now, some of the strengths that the Kona has uh, relative to something like the Bolt EV is it you know, it has the driver assist, it has the uh, adaptive cruise control features, it has a lot of uh, software and tech that's not available on the Bolt EV. Now, of course, you know, that pushes up the price, but I've discussed this before, a lot of people are willing to pay that price. Uh, you know, they've implemented something that I've suggested for the Bolt EV2 that's more of a software-based uh, um, issue is where you can actually control 
the battery's maximum state of charge in 10% increments. Now the Bolt EV has that option with the Hilltop Reserve mode, but it's it's really only one option. Uh, the, the Kona lets you, it looks like, control all the way down to a 10% battery. I don't know why anybody would ever do that, but you do have that added flexibility and control over the battery. So it, it's got a lot of software and tech. It's got a lot of features inside. Uh, the interior appointments are a little bit better. Uh, but overall, it really is a direct competitor, but it comes down to what you're using it for and you know whether you need the cargo space, whether you need the passenger space, because to me, that would be a big deal breaker. And you know though it does have faster charging, I don't know that that should be a buying decision right now. And one of the things that I noticed from uh, Bjorn's video, and you know, we'll need to do more testing on the efficiency, but at 70 to 75 miles an hour, the numbers that he was posting looked to be about 10% worse than the Bolt EV's efficiency. So even though the Kona does charge about 30% faster, it's gonna be about 10% less efficient while driving on fast uh, highway trips. So that eats into that you know, advantage that you see from the faster charging uh, and it offsets it a little bit. And so you know, really when you wanna use a use case example, for me, if I were using it on my regular 500 mile trip, I might have a 10 minute advantage using the Kona EV, but here's where the problem is. Uh, that's only if faster chargers are available. On the 125 amp chargers, there's really not that much of a difference in the charging rates at all. Uh, it will preserve a higher charging rate uh, for a longer period of time, um, but not that significantly better, right? In fact, because of the lower efficiency at freeway speeds, it'll effectively be charging slower up to about 55% battery, but then effectively be charging at about the same exact speed up to about 70% battery. So if you're, if you're looking just at the charging rates, I don't know that that's enough of a reason, enough of an advantage. It's nicer to have the faster charging for sure, uh, but it's not so significantly different that it would be a buying decision not with something like the Leaf, which is reportedly going to be charging at 100 kilowatts when the 60 kilowatt hour version of that Leaf comes out. So I think that's a more compelling reason if, if you're worried about charging speeds. But again, until the network of faster chargers is actually implemented, it's not really that big of a deal. I'm interested in hearing what you think about the new Kona Electric. Uh, whether it's a car that you think would suit your needs, what you like, what you don't like about it. Uh, you know, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.